Now, welcome to this video all about purging a natural gas pipe. So, let's get on with it and find out exactly what we mean by purging a natural gas pipe. So, first of all, why do we need to actually purge a gas pipe? Well, after we've done some work on a gas pipe, we could have allowed air into that system. So after we've done our successful tightness test, we will need to purge the gas and air mixture out of the installation. Now, depending on how big the installation is, will depend upon how we actually carry this out. So it's actually set up into two procedures. Because what we're trying to avoid is a mixture of 5 to 15% gas in air within that installation because we're trying to avoid an explosion. So, what are these two ways or two parts of doing it? Now, there is one for the larger system and one for the domestic average small system. Let's have a look at this larger system first. So, if the system installation volume, which is commonly known as the IV, exceeds 0.02 meters cubed, but is less than 0.035 meters cubed, or the pipework is greater than 28 millimeters up to 35 millimeters, and our gas meter is a U16 or G10 or 60 meters cubed an hour, then the procedure we follow is laid down in IGEM UP1B. So this is for the larger systems. And basically what that says is, if our installation volume exceeds 0.02 meters cubed, but is less than 0.035 meters cubed, then when we come to purge the system, we would need to ignite it at the most convenient place. So that could be something like a cooker. But that is not actually our purge volume we will need to pass through the meter and through the installation. Our actual purge volume is one and a half times our installation volume. But we'll look at that a little bit later on when we actually show you the workings out. Now, the other way of purging is just like when you were getting a small domestic property. So our pipe work is equal to or less than 28 millimeters and our gas meter is only giving us six meters cubed an hour. So an E6, uh, U6, G4 gas meter. The way we do that is we use the cyclic volume of the meter. So basically what we do is we do five times the badge capacity. So that could be equal to 0.01 meters cubed or 0.355 cubic feet if you're using the old cubic feet meters. So let's have a look at this first before we go on to the biggie. Now let's have a look at this procedure for the G4 meter. Now this is basically a metric meter, not a cubic feet meter. It gets a little bit of confusion when you say G4 and it actually says U6 on the meter. If it's C a meter when it says U6 and it's in metric, that means it's an ultrasonic meter, so there's no moving parts. So anyway, hopefully that sorts out that. So when I'm talking a G4, I'm talking about a metric meter. So if you look at the front of the G4 meter on the data badge, it will give you its volume in decimeters cubed. But remember, we do need to pass 0.01 meters cubed, so this is where it comes from. So if we have a capacity of two decimeters cubed, we do five times the badge capacity. So two times five is 10 decimeters cubed. And 10 decimeters cubed is equivalent to this 0.01 meters cubed. So how do we work that out on the meter? Because remember, when we're working out our purge volumes, it's always going to be going off the meter because the meter is telling us how much gas we've actually put through it. So if we take our first reading, we look at the meter, we've got the three last red squares and we've got the number in front of it. So we've got 1.123. 
Now this last figure is the decimeters cubed. So it's in tens, so it goes from one to zero. So as it passes all the way around, it will make the next figure go up by one. So if we wanted to pass 10 decimeters cubed or 0.01 meters cubed from this one, then our second figure would be 1.133. So that means we've increased by 10 decimeters cubed or 0.01 meters cubed. So, incredibly easy. But this is the purge volume. We need to also put into consideration the purge procedure. And the purge procedure would be notify the responsible person that they, you're gonna purge and you could smell gas. You're gonna actually ventilate the area and where you're going to purge. You need to purge the furthest away from the meter and every leg after that as well. And you need to pass this minimum volume. And it does say if we're less than the 0.02 meters cubed, we can allow that air to go into the room and then out. But remember, if our volume is greater than 0.02 meters cubed, then we must continually try to ignite it from something as easy as the cooker. So that's for the G4 of the metric meter. Let's look at a U6 imperial meter. Now, again, with this U6 uh, cubic feet meter, we're still doing the five times the badge capacity. And the reason why people say we use this five times the badge capacity, because there are four chambers in a gas meter and then we have one for the pipe. That's where they say that's where it comes from. Now the badge capacity for this uh, cubic feet meter, this U6 or six meters cubed an hour, is 0.071 cubic feet per revolution. So five times 0.071 equals 0.355 cubic feet. Now again, to make it easy for us, the actual test dial of the gas meter is set up into 10 segments. So we've got one, half, and then this 10 segments. So that means if that red needle went all the way around there, that means it would pass one cubic foot. But we want just three and a half segments, or just over three and a half quadrants of that uh, test dial. So we go one, two, three, three and a half, and then half again. So we would need to pass that minimum of 0 0.355 cubic feet. And that's how we would do the purging of this U6 or the old cubic feet meter. So that's looking at the metric and cubic feet meters for pipe work uh, equal to and less than 28 mil and your gas meter being six meters cubed an hour. So let's take a look at this bigger installation where our pipe work is greater than 28 mil up to 35 mil and our gas meter is up to 16 meters cubed an hour. So that's a U16 or a G10 meter. So let's take a look at this installation because we've got a meter more than six meters cubed an hour. We've got a G10, so that's 16 meters cubed an hour. And we've got 35 millimeter pipe. Now, also it's important this because we've got figures we're not gonna ever remember in our head. So we need some way of doing that. So if you've got the logic manual, it's on page E7, but I'm gonna give you the figures anyway, so you can always refer back to this video. Or you need iGEM um, UP1B for this. So this is to work out our installation volume. And you'll see it in your exams written as IV installation volume. And then you'll see PV, which we're going to look at next, which stands for purge volume, not pipe volume, which everybody seems to get confused with. Now, first thing we need to do is go round the installation and measure how many meters of pipe we've got but we don't need to really worry about fittings I'll talk about that in a minute but these are the figures you're gonna need so 15 millimeter 
So I've got one meter of in length of 15 millimeter pipe. It will hold 0.00014 meters cubed of gas. If I've got 22 millimeter pipe and I'll meter of it, it will hold 0.00032 meters cubed of gas per meter. If I've got 28, 0.00054 meters cubed per meter and for 35 we've got 0.00084 meters cubed per meter of tube. Now this is also different for your stainless steel uh, flexible pipe work and also different for your seal pipes so you'll need those figures out of your manual if you're using steel or um, your flexible stainless steel tube. We also need to know how much gas is in the gas meters. So if we've got a G4U6 meter, there's 0.008 meters cubed in there. If we've got a U16 or a G10, we've got 0.025 meters cubed. And if we've got an E6, we've got 0.0024 meters cubed. So that's how much gas the meters hold, and they're the important figures. We need to know the pipework, and we also need to know what the meter holds. Now, next thing is, we've gone around, we've seen what meter we've got, and we've checked what uh, meter lengths of pipework we've got. So in this installation, we have got a G10 gas meter. We have got 12 meters of 15 millimeter pipe, We've got 11 metres of 22 millimetre pipe, we've got 15 metres of 28 millimetre pipe, and we've got 10 metres of 35 millimetre pipe. So we've gone around, we've measured everything. So next thing we need to do is we need to times these figures by how much per metre. So if we take the 15 millimetre pipe, we know we've got 12 metres of it, and we know the figure is 0.00014. So we do 12 times 0.0014, which gives us a total of 0.00168 meters cubed for the lengths of 15 mil. Remember, we're not worried about the fittings at the moment. The 22 mil pipe, we know we've got 11 meters of it. So we do 11 times 0.00032 which gives us a total for those 11 metres of 0.00352. Same for the 28, we know we've got 15 metres of it, so we do 15 times 0.00054, which gives us a total of 0.0081 for the total lengths for the 28 mil. And then finally, we do that for the 35 millimetres, we know there's 10 metres of it, so it's 10 times this figure, the 0.00084, gives us a total of 0.0084 metres cubed for the 10 metres of 35. And if we add those figures together, we get a grand total of 0.0217 metres cubed of gas within our pipework. Next thing we need to do is, we need to add on for fittings. To make it easier, we don't go around and start adding up all the fittings, we just times it by 1.1 or 10%. So we're adding on 10% for the fittings. So we take our 0 0.0217, we times it by the 10%, which is times it by 1.1, gives us a total of 0 0.02387 so that's now your fittings and your pipework so next thing we need to do is we need to add on our G10 meter and our G10 meter has 0.025 meters cubed in it so we need to do the total of the pipe and the fittings which is 0.02387 and we need to add on this 0.025, which gives us a total of 0.04887. So what does that tell us? 
Well, it actually tells us we're greater than the 0.035 meters cubed, which IGMUP1B allows us to work on. So that's messed us up, hasn't it? So that means we are not allowed to work on this installation unless we hold IGMUP1 or 1A commercial ticket. That's a bother, isn't it? So that's the first part of working out your purge volume is working out your installation volume or your IV first. Now we need to look at doing the purge volume. So to calculate our purge volume or our PV, we take our installation volume, which was 0.04887. And like I explained just a minute ago, that our maximum we can go up to is 0.035. Uh, meters cubed in, uh, volume in the pipe so as a domestic engineer we couldn't work on it but to turn our IV to our PV so our installation volume to our purge volume we take the figure and we times it by 1.5 so 0 0.04887 times by 1.5 gives us a volume of 0 0.073 meters cubed so that's what we would need to pass through the meter to make sure we've got rid of this 5 to 15% gas and air mixture. Now, according to IGM UP1B, in Appendix 7, it says our installation volume is over 0.02 meters cubed. We need to ignite it. So it doesn't really matter what our purge volume is. That's what the minimum we've got to pass through the meter. But if it's over this 0.02, we still need to ignite it. But it does say if our installation volume is less than 0.02, then no matter what our purge volume is, we could safely leave it to purge into the air as long as we follow the correct purge procedure. But it does also say if our IV is less than 0.02 meters cubed, but our purge volume is over the 0.02, then we can ignite it if we think it's needed so it might not be safe enough to purge into the room so that's my look at purging the small and larger installations to get rid of this 5 to 15 percent gas in air which could become an explosive mixture anyway hopefully you've liked the video and i'll catch you on the next one cheers